say anything like Zoom, but yep, let everyone know they're being recorded. Okay, Caitlin. Caitlin Kenny, nice to have you on with Coach Wink. I know most people think we're going to talk about lacrosse today, but lacrosse will be a very small part of it. Caitlin, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank you. It's so good to talk to you. For those people out there in the world of lacrosse that don't know who Caitlin is, I'll give you a little of Coach Wink's biography. She is a three-sport athlete from Mineola High School. Um, she is a fraternal twin to Elizabeth, and they are... They are like two thieves when it comes to athletics. They're both awesome at everything they do, and they're good, great kids. And uh, I know um, I met your mom a couple of years ago. She's a coach as well, and um, you have a different journey than most lacrosse players. So I wanted to just interview you and talk about your journey so that we could educate the little girls out there that want to be Caitlin Kenny's in the future. Yeah. So if you're cool with it, I'm gonna I'm gonna brag a little bit about you. Okay. Um, let's talk first off, three-sport athlete, all-state in volleyball, uh, went to the States, right? Mm -hmm. Mineola went how far in the States? We lost in the semifinals, but we lost to the eventual champions who were a very, very good team from Burnt Hills, Boston Lake. They actually have been up there, I think, not, they've won nine times out of like the past 15 years, I think they went. So they're always up there and they're a very good team, but it was cool to be up there and have that experience, especially after our season was like so cool. We like we made we made like a, a power conference this year. We we're in conference one. So that helped us like get ready for the like like lacrosse they have. So they made that for volleyball the first time. And that got us really prepared for all these good games during the season. And then in the playoffs, we were ready to go. And we had like a great run. We had a crazy game against Wantaw where we won a five set match. That was our county final game. And then we swept um Sayville and our Long Island Championship, which is really cool. That is cool. It's so cool that when you when you win the Long Island Championship, it's like it's such a big deal in every sport. Yeah. People don't realize it. It's because it's like your it's like the badge of honor, right? I know it's Nassau versus Suffolk. You want to be the best, the best on Long Island. Yeah, and it's cool because a lot of these kids you see in all the circuits. Now, let's talk about your journey because obviously, um, People don't know it. Besides being a great volleyball player, you're a great and obviously a great lacrosse player because that's how I know you. But you're also an amazing basketball player. And you've decided, as LeBron once said, to take your talents to NYU <laughs> and play hoops, right? Yeah. Now, you played all three sports growing up. When did you pick up volleyball? I picked up volleyball, I think, in like third or fourth grade because my mom was the C coach of our CYO team at St. Aidan's. So I picked it up like very early and then basketball and lacrosse probably the same time too. I played for Carl Place in like our PAL and then St. Aiden's basketball when I was little. So did you go the, did you play club volleyball? Did you play AAU basketball? I played AAU basketball. I played one year of club volleyball and then I kind of like kept, I played um, club lacrosse the whole time and AAU basketball like all my life. And then I did one year of club volleyball and then I decided like basketball and lacrosse are my two favorite. I didn't have time to do everything. So that's what I stuck to. That's cool. Now, when you played AAU basketball in the summertime, right? Because that's a summer. That's really summer travel. No? Yeah. yeah, we start like late spring and then travel through July. How did you do both that and club lacrosse? Because I I saw your club lacrosse team. You had a really good team. Yeah. Liberty, our Liberty 2014 was good this year. It was a really good team to be a part of. But it was crazy. Like, there was actually a crazy story. One time, we had a lacrosse tournament and a basketball tournament. Like, we were in Las Vegas for a basketball tournament. It was, I think, Thursday through – or Wednesday through Friday. And then our lacrosse tournament was the next, like, weekend, Saturday, Sunday. And we took a red line fright from Las Vegas, landed – with our lacrosse stuff in the car, we drove right to our lacrosse tournament, which was crazy. <laughs> it was a long, long weekend, but it was really cool that, like, I really had no conflicts. It was just a lot of practicing at the same time and a lot of going back and forth, which I was very lucky that I didn't have to miss. I don't think I actually missed any tournaments that year for lacrosse or basketball. I just went to and fro, which was a lot. Okay, so you're going through the process. I just want to throw a little stuff out there. On the hoop team this year, you were in the playoffs. You were nine and three league, fifteen and six. Interesting. I saw you beat Wantaw in volleyball, but lost to them. 
I know. Crazy, right? Same kids too, right? Same kids, I gather. Similar, yeah, right? Sim there was a couple girls that played both. And also, almost this year, we almost had to, if we were, a, I think, a seven seed, which was possible for us in lacrosse, we would have had to win our first game, but then possibly play Wanta again. I'm kind of glad that I don't have to do that. Like, I'd rather just pick a new team in the playoffs, but it's kind of funny that we always see each other. Yeah, well, great, great, two great communities that have great um, athletics. And in basketball, you average 14 and a half points. Your twin sister averaged 14.4. You were 14.5. Oh. <laughs> in lacrosse, Elizabeth has 59 points, if my points are right. You have 56 points. So you guys are like literally twins in all aspects of that. It's crazy. Yeah. Now, in, in volleyball, you both hitters? What, do you, what, what positions? No, it's um, Elizabeth plays the center, and I play um, a middle. So I'm a middle hitter, which is really nice. We've got, like, the one-two connection going, which is nice. We don't have to, we don't really compete in points for that because she gives me all my – she's basically gets all the assists for the team, and then I hit. That's and cool. Go. That's cool. It's funny. It's funny um, when you – look at your your resume of of athletics and and evaluate like how you did everything now when you were going through the process of getting recruited in you I gather basketball and lacrosse how did you when did you make the decision you were going hoops i think it was really pretty late my my sophomore year or like our big our big lacrosse summer i was like pretty set i was like i'm going to play lacrosse i i went on a bunch of visits for like different schools and I really thought, like, this is what I wanted, wanted to do. And eventually, like, I sat down with my mom and actually I talked to my AAU coach. And I was like, because I've also was doing some visits for basketball as well. I was like, I think I want to play basketball. I can't see myself not playing basketball in the future. But I think I could probably, I think I would miss basketball and, like, not play and not, I would miss not playing basketball. And I couldn't see myself not playing basketball in the future. I would miss it too much to, like, not pursue it. Lacrosse, right, because lacrosse, you said, I, I love it, but I could live without it. Yeah. Now, yeah. I would imagine, because I've seen you play lacrosse, that you're being recruited by Division I schools in lacrosse, correct? Yeah. And you're going, for people that don't know basketball, you're going to the National Championship NYU team, mm -hmm. which is so cool. Yeah. So, you know, for, to educate the young girls out there that someday might want to make that decision, you know, because the level of basketball and the level of lacrosse, they're both great. But you picked Division Three basketball because you thought it would be a great experience, right? And yeah. the education, obviously. Yeah, yeah. And how'd you pick NYU? Like, did, 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 it, did it, like, you go on a visit and love it? What happened? Well, they kind of found me. Like, actually, my dad was an assistant soccer coach there. And he was saying, like, he actually saw my name on a board. And he was like, wait are you talking like, cause they had, I guess their offices are connected. And he was like, is that my daughter on the board? And he was, they were like, yeah. And they were like, like, have you reached out to her yet? And they were like, no, like, we're not sure if we're going to get her. Like she might go somewhere else. And he was like, well, reach out to her, reach out to her. And then I went on a visit. I watched a bunch of games. I loved how they play. I loved the team and the coaches were great. So like, they really helped me make my decision. It was like pretty easy. Like I was like, wow, this is a team I want to play for. Yeah, it's such an amazing school for the people who don't know it out there. I mean, it has everything you ever want in in life. You're gonna live. You live on campus, right? Yeah, I live on campus. Yeah, it's really cool. I, I've been down to the school. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so happy for you. That's great. Now, thank did you have to tell the lacrosse coaches like, "Thank you, but I decided to play hoops in uh, college"? How'd that go down? Not really. I kind of was like, it wasn't like a. It was kind of like I slowed down to like my communication, telling them I wasn't sure yet. And then I, I really picked up my basketball stuff. So kind of I had to tell them, like, I'm going to pursue basketball. But it wasn't like a close the door and walk into another one. It was kind of like gradual. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, now it's funny because your sister's obviously great at everything, too. Has she decided what she wants to do yet? She has not. She's also she's thinking about playing volleyball in college, actually, which is really crazy because she also only played one season of club volleyball but I did it my eighth grade year and she did it her um senior year and she's got some interest from volleyball schools and then she's also got some interest from lacrosse schools but she hasn't made her decision yet that's cool that's cool yeah. and it's 
it, you know, it's funny because everybody's in, in such a rush to make a decision. And here's an opportunity where you had you and your sister had two sports that or in her in her case, volleyball lacrosse, in your case, hoops lacrosse. Mm -hmm. And you just let the kind of the process happen. Correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah which, I, is, which is what we try to tell people. There's no rush. Yeah, definitely. I, especially like through basketball, I think it takes a little longer than lacrosse. Like our big summer is our junior summer. Versus lacrosse, I feel like it's our sophomore summer. And I think that makes like the decision process a little more scary because they're like, where are you going to go? And you're a junior in high school. But I was not, I didn't have that attitude. I, I was, even the coaches I was talking to for lacrosse, I was like, I want to take my time. I, I don't want to make a, a decision September any day. I just want to take my team time and see how like all this stuff works out, which all yeah. the coaches are, like appreciative of. You know, it's funny you just said that. And I think that what you just said is exactly what I constantly speak to coaches about. Like, why would an athlete be any different than a student? Why should students don't make their decision till their yeah. senior year? Shouldn't athletes make their decision their senior yeah. year? That's when you're ready. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. When did you decide? When, when, would, when did you say, NYU, I'm going there? Um, Probably, like... March, I was like really like pretty sure I'm gonna. This is where I want to go, and then I really committed like May because the application process for like a Division three school is a little different. I didn't apply um like I didn't apply regular decision. I actually I applied regular decision, not like um early decision. So I committed like basically May first when I all my applications were due. But I knew I were where I wanted to go in like March. Right. And then what, what did the coach say? We support your app. Obviously, you have to have good grades to get into NYU. Yeah. yeah. They they tell you that your grades are good enough and we support you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's interesting. May, you're talking about May 1st just happened? Mm-hmm. Oh, so when I was texting your mom, you had just committed. Yeah, like literally like the day or two before. Oh, I didn't even realize that. So May of your senior year, well... You you decided I'm going to NYU and I'm going to play basketball. Mm -hmm. See, that's my point. It, 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 you, I see a smile on your face, and obviously you're very excited and happy about this. You know, so obviously it was the right decision because that's what that's what you have to look for. Yeah. I was just talking to a girl who's a junior, and she's committed to a Division One lacrosse school, and she literally told me that she didn't. You know, she still has her options open, and I'm like then why make the decision? Like, yeah. just wait. And like, all these schools should do that because at the end of the day, don't you want kids to be committed and really want to go there? Yeah, I feel like that's actually happened a lot of times and I'm sure there's other situations, but I feel like the 24s in our class have like, there's been some switches like during the year. Like I'm like one of my teammates, Maureen, was going to go to Colgate and now she's at going to Florida. So yep. the other girls are doing the same thing. So I feel like I mean, obviously there were some other situations, but I was like, I feel like if you don't make your decision early, then you have more time to like, just pro like go through the process and like see where you land instead of trying to go so fast and pick a place just to have somewhere to go. Exactly. And at the end of the day, when you're smart enough to go to the schools that we're talking about, you know, the opportunity will be there because that's, to me, I think the process is kind of convoluted. And this is one of the big you know, take points that I want kids to get out of this is that you can slow. Now, I get it. Coaches kind of want to close out their classes, so to speak. Yeah. But in reality, the whole process should be, let's do it when the kid's starting into their senior year. So it yeah. used to be they couldn't Especially even call you. Application process. Like, you exactly. should apply to the school. So that's important, too. Yeah, and 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 obviously, if you're not going to go play in the WNBA and be, you know, a, 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 a Caitlin Clark, so to speak. I mean, how many Caitlin Clarks are they? I mean, only one. <laughs> they're exa exactly, exactly. Did you see her at the Nick game the other night? I didn't. Are you guys Nick fans? I am. I'm. I'm sad that they lost the other night. I wanted them yeah. to win. I wanted them to get a sweep. Yeah, I know. I'm, 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 I'm praying tonight, but it's funny. She was at the game the other night, and she was uh, obviously rooting for Indiana because that's who she's playing for in the WNBA. Yeah. But it was cool to see her and stuff, and obviously to see what is what has come about. Um, 
I think it's really interesting, and I hope people listening to you um, get out of this uh, conversation that you really need to do what's in the best interest of yourself, not what the the public or the process is forcing you to do. And when I when I was texting with your mom, I was like, this is a young lady that did the, in my opinion, did what was in the best interest of Caitlin and just like Elizabeth doing what's in the best interest of Elizabeth. And I think that's wonderful. Kudos to mom and dad for raising yeah. two very intelligent kids. Now, do you have other siblings or is it just you two? Yeah, I have an older brother. What's he doing? He um he just finished his first um his first year of college at LIU. He's playing basketball there. But I think he's in the transfer portal now. Oh, he's at like, LIU Brooklyn? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So now he's going through the process of where else yeah. he's gonna go. Yeah. Which he's a little nervous about, but he's like he kind of he's almost made his decision, so he's pretty calm now. But that was a little crazy because I feel like the transfer portal is a whole nother thing. Oh my God, it's crazy yeah. what's going on with that. I hear stories and it's like, like all of a sudden I'm getting phone calls from college coaches and they're asking me about kids. And I'm like, why are you asking me about this kid? And they're like, oh, he's in the transfer portal. I'm like, really? It's, it's, it's getting recruited all over again. Yeah, which I have no intention of doing. I think I've found my place and I want to ride, like stick it out at NYU and hopefully win a national championship or a few. And get a good education. I, I don't want to deal with the transfer portal at all. That's why I'm excited no. going. I'm I want to be there all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. And it's very cool with, with the culture. Cause I was I was doing some uh I was educating myself on the NYU coach. She's a 2002 graduate of NYU. Yeah. So it sounds like she's a lifer. Mm-hmm. And one of the assistants also graduated from there. I, I'm not sure what year, but she also graduated from there. And then one one of the other assistants, I believe. I believe she graduated from Tennessee. She played basketball there, but I, I might be wrong. And maybe it was Texas, but both still like serious basketball schools. Major Division One hoops. It's funny. It's funny because um, at NYU, I was looking at their roster. You're you're the only Long Island kid, that, right? Yeah, there was one girl from. Um, I believe she's from Brooklyn, but that was like the closest person that we like to me. Most of them are like they recruit basically all over the country. Like one girl. I know, from- yeah, I noticed that they're you're you're which is which to me is very cool because now you'll have re- friendships with kids from all over America. Yeah. Which yeah. which to me is one of the best parts of college. And I'm sure your parents have told you this. You'll meet people that will be your best friends for the rest of your life. Yeah. You don't know who they are yet. You might. You might you meet people in your class already? I have not. I have not. I really want to. I gotta get on that. But I've not met anyone. Now, take me through the process at NYU. Do they put you just in the general um, public when it comes to dorms? You just your your room with I have whoever. To, um, usually, you can sometimes you can pick your roommate. Other times, like I'm going a random roommate. I would I was trying to room with an athlete, but it like you're not supposed to room with your teammates. You're supposed you could try to find another athlete or just random room, which is what I'm doing. Yeah, I kind of like that. I when I went to college, I did random and it builds your friendship groups bigger. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to meet some new people. I'm I'm sure whoever my roommate is will get along fine. So, I'm excited for that. Yeah, you're going to have you're going to I mean, NYU is so international and it's it's such you're going to have people you're going to meet people from like Brazil and Venezuela yeah. and which is cool. It's it's yeah. that's what's cool about NYU. It's you know, you're going to have relationships with people from all over the world and then you could go visit Brazil and stay with your friend. Yeah, they have so many, I, NYU has so many campuses like worldwide, like in the library actually, like, or maybe when it was one of the, um, like the cafeterias, they just have like a wall of clocks from all their different like campuses around the world. And it's just like, what time is it there? What time is it everywhere else? Which is really cool. I'm like, wow, this is, you can see how like broad, like NYU, like NYU reaches. Do you have any idea what you want to study yet? I don't. I actually applied to the liberal studies school and that's what I'll start there. And then I will like get some of my core classes like done and then I could pick a major from there. They have a good um, sports management program, which I might want to go into, but I didn't want to make that decision like immediately. So I applied to liberal studies. Yes, it does. It does have a great. That's great. And 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 maybe someday you could be the general manager of the Knicks. Yeah, hopefully. That was great. <laughs> How cool a job is that? Because that guy's doing an amazing job. 
Yeah. <laughs> He's picking all the right guys. And he was an agent before that. I don't know if you know that. I did not. Yeah, he was an agent. So he used to represent the athletes and he had a relationship with uh, uh, Dolan and they, they hired him. And he's, I mean, as we can tell, I'm a huge Nick fan. He's done a great job. A lot of Villanova guys on the team. I love Nova guys. Love Nova yeah. guys. Now, who, who in in college girls basketball, who's what was the team that like you watched the most or you would say was your team? Obviously, I liked Iowa because of Caitlin Clark, but I really liked Notre Dame. I liked their play. And also Virginia Tech. Those like the those are the two schools in the ACC that I followed the most because I really liked um, the point guard, the freshman point guard, Hannah Hildago on Notre Dame. And then Liz Kitley and Georgia Amor. They're like the duo on Virginia Tech, and I loved them. They were great. Those are like now what? Sorry to interrupt, but what's your position in hoops? Like, are you a one, two, three, four, five? What are you? I'm like a forward, like a three forward. Got it. You a shooter? Yeah, I'm a I'm a little bit of a shooter. <laughs> yeah, do you do you, do you you put up threes? I put up. I'll take a couple during games. Like my sister is like the big three point shooter in our family. I play more of like a. I play like I could play in the post, but I also step out. So I play like all the way around. Yeah, and your mom, your mom coached you all these years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your mom's an awesome coach. I always enjoyed watching your mom yeah. coach. She just had, she had a great way about her. And it, it, I've always, I've, I was, I was always like, uh, I like this lady. She knows what she's doing. Yeah, she's a she's a phys ed teacher, right? Mm-hmm. She teaches phys ed, phys ed at West Hempstead. That's right. She's at West Hempstead. That's right, because she coaches the lax team. I always said yeah. to her, man, it's a bummer that you can't, you know, she can't get to a lot of your games because they, they I know. Especially this year, we were actually supposed to, since um, they changed our schedule up a little bit since Farmingdale stayed in our conference. So at first we were like, well, she's going to get to come to a lot of the games because we thought they weren't going to be. And then it got switched up so she couldn't come to as much. I know that's a little bit of a bummer on that. And it, it, how about hoops? Does she coach anything in the winter? No, she well, she coaches um middle school bas like girls basketball, but that was like it's not really a conflict because those like winter one, winter two stuff. Gotcha. Yeah, because mm -hmm. uh, or hopefully she's gonna get to come see you guys play. Um, obviously yeah. you at NYU and wherever your sister decides to go play volleyball. Because mm -hmm. now, did you guys decide early on that you want to go to different schools? Did was it a conversation? It wasn't really ever a conversation. We kind of just like went through our own stuff, like see. Uh, the opportunities we had and they weren't used like they didn't usually interfere which was kind of funny so like we didn't have a conversation like hey I don't I don't want to go to school with you or I do it was just like we'll see where we end up and and it hasn't been the same place interesting interesting yeah. I as I told you before we jumped on the uh, recording part of this I have uh, grandchildren that are in that are little two-year-olds mm -hmm. and are girls and two-year-old boys and I'm always curious to see how that, you know, because I've seen twins that cannot separate and twins that want to separate. Yeah, I don't think we, I don't want to. I, I don't think she wants to either. It's just kind of like how it happened. And like, she's like probably my, my, she's easily my favorite teammate ever. Like we do everything together. So it's kind of sad that we're not going to continue our college careers together, but it's just the way that it is. So that's all right. Yeah, it's going to be, it, it, it's a little sad because you guys are inseparable, right? Yeah, I mean, we do everything together. We have, like, the same friends. We play on the same teams. We have, like, I feel like on the field and on the court, we have, like, a, a different connection than, like, a, a regular teammates would have. So it's it's hard to, like, it's, like it's, it's going to be weird to not have that with someone on the court next year, but I'll figure that out. Now, have you noticed that, like, you always or she always know where each other are? I think that I think it kind of happens naturally. Like we find each other, especially on the lacrosse and like lacrosse field and basketball court. Like, like I feel like we just kind of find each other in transition or passing or like looking up to the court. I'm always looking for her. She's always looking for me. Volleyball's a little different. She also is always looking for me, but like just the play runs differently. But when we yeah, have like, it's innate. It's it's innate. It's 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 because and it's no different. Just so you know, and this is I've noticed from coaching for all these years. If you take two young men or two young women that grow up from kindergarten playing mm -hmm. sports together and they constantly play whatever they play, they're generally going to know where each other are because they've been doing it so long. Yeah. Yeah. And she's easy to find on the cross field. She's a great cutter. I just always like dish it into her and like, well, 
I know I know I'm confident that I'm passing to the right person right now. Well, you guys have had I mean, you guys have had great years in all three sports, obviously states in volleyball playoff run to the quarters in hoops. Now yeah. you're the I think you're the eight seed, right? Yeah. Against Beth Page on Thursday. Well, you're going to play. I just found this out. There's a playing game. Check this oh, out. Division and Beth Page. Yeah. So the winner of that game Monday plays you. Yeah. And then the winner of Roslyn Friends plays Lindbrook. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They Which had a, I didn't know about because we posted the, the the thing and then it was wrong and now we're reposting it. Yeah. <laughs> but thank God Coach Donnellan at Division straightened me out. He's a good guy and he oh, yeah. he knows what's going on, which I appreciate. Brother, at my school, Mr. Donnellan is teaches U.S. history at my school. His brother. Oh no way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. It's yeah, funny. it was fun when we played we played Division early in the season as one of our non leagues, and I was like. He looks so familiar. And I was like, that's where I know him from. He's his brother. Oh, he looks just like his brother? They look twins. It's, it's weird. They look so much alike. It's funny. I have a younger brother, and we look a lot alike, too. So it's, it's, and we used to work together, and he used to not say hello to people who thought it was me. And I was like, just say hello to everybody so that they don't think I'm being rude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you and your sister look alike. You don't, you, I wouldn't say, you're identical because I've seen you together, but you do look alike. Like you yeah. definitely look like sisters. Yeah. Especially when we stand next to like me, my sister and my brother, like you're like, oh, you can tell that they're all siblings. Like we're me and Elizabeth don't look alike like too much. And then you put us next to our brother and you're like, actually, they all look the same. Like they all look so similar. How tall is your bro? He's like six six. So what is he like a like a two or a three? Yeah, he plays, he plays like the three because he can shoot. He can also shoot. Did he go to Mineola? No, he went, he went to Kellenberg. Ah, the parochials. They're good in hoops. Yeah, he, he, funny. he had his senior year. He had a real good senior year. So he played with, uh, with Kiernan. He played with Ryan, Ryan Kiernan, who's a, what's Ryan's year? Ryan might have been, I don't know, he might have been a sophomore. So I don't know if Ryan was a senior there, but he was a, he's a Kellenberg. He's a, he's a Hooper too, but I don't know if they were on the same hoop team. I, I don't recognize the name. Did you go to, do you go to Kellenberg games? Yeah, I went to some. He's like, I remember his teammate was James Cavallaro. Like, that was like, he was like a good point guard there, but I don't remember all his teammates' names. Did your, did your brother just finish his freshman year at LIU? Mm hmm. Okay. But he did a he did a post grad year at Frederick Gunn. Oh, yeah. So he so yeah so he so Ryan would have been a freshman. He probably was on the JV then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that that pushes him back two years. Yeah. that's cool. That's cool. So he went to Frederick Gunn and then PG then went on. Mm-hmm. It's funny hoops is it's, it's 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 so different than than like lacrosse yeah. or even probably volleyball, right? When it comes to recruiting. Yeah, definitely. I think I think basketball is like. I think my basketball like recruitment was a little more stressful than my lacrosse recruitment. I just feel like, cause maybe like the number of girls on a roster and like just where I live, like I feel like basketball is not huge on Long Island. I think it's maybe growing, but it's not huge like versus lacrosse where it's like the opposite. So being, it was a little more stressful during basketball. Cause I'm like, where am I going to end up? Whereas lacrosse, I feel like people were kind of coming to me. Yeah, just, where'd you do summer camp? You go to Luai? What? Where'd you do your summer camps? Did you ever go to a hoop summer camp when you were like in sixth or seventh grade? Oh, uh, we always did. We actually always did a Rising Star summer camp, and it was at Luai. But yeah, yeah, because they, they they got they got some legit hoops at Luai. Some they have some good players. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure you've played against some some high level kids over the years that are going to like major major D1 schools, yeah. right? This 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 um, past summer was like the coolest summer for my AU season. We we did the um, EYCL like Champions League, which is just like a Nike circuit. That was that was one of the toughest like competitions that I've ever played in basketball in my life. And it was it was great. We actually had a huge run in Chicago, like the first it was actually the first time I've ever played in an overtime game. And we played like a double overtime game. The first game of the the first game of the tournament. It was it was a huge win for us because we were like we have like a very athletic team like all the girls are 
a lot of the girls have a similar build to me, like tall, skinny, like, but like fast. And then this one team was huge and they're like, they really thought they were going to like run us, like run over us. And we ended up beating them in double overtime, which was huge. And then we had another overtime game in the same tournament in Chicago. So that was like a huge competition and we played hard. And that was like probably my favorite tournament that I've ever had. Did you press a lot in hoops? No, we don't. We don't usually press, which is kind of funny. Our t- our coach just likes us to get back and like play hard defense in the half court. Gotcha. Do you play zone or man to man? We played a lot. We play a lot of man. Yeah, it's better better for recruiting because they want to see you covered. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's and- the same thing. It's same thing. In, I I I I'm, I I will never let in club. You should never play zone because you're not you're not you're not teaching the you know showing the kids abilities. Yeah. You know, you can't see it as well. So. I, some some hard defenders on our team was like there's there's no need to have them sit in the zone because like a lot of our guards can go out and get some steals they work hard so sitting in a zone didn't like help us offensively because we would just a lot of the, our points would like steal transition but sitting in a zone we didn't get that as much that's cool so your experience and it's funny that's one of the big reasons why i wanted to get on a call with you is i wanted to educate everybody out there and let them learn about your journey because why 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 decide what your journey is going to be kind of let the journey happen right yeah when you say that's what you did you let and then you went with your heart yeah I feel like that was like why I'm so confident with my decision right now I I let everything like I let all my options like I I weighed them all through I but then I decided like I'm going to pursue what I really love to do and I found a place that I'm really excited to do it at so it's just like, a, I think my recruiting process like really worked out for me and I'm really happy with what, like how everything has worked out for me. And it's just like, it's because I took my time and I really like just thought all my options through. The best advice. And I got to tell you something. I really, truly appreciate you jumping on with me because your advice can help a little girl or a middle school girl or a girl about to go through the process that might be, because there are a lot of really good lacrosse players that are really good at other things. Mm -hmm. It might not even be sports. It might be theater. It might be arts. It might be whatever. And I think it's so important that you let that happen so that, you know, you can be happy. Because really at the end of the day, isn't that the most important thing? Go to college, enjoy it, and be happy. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, I hope that you're very happy. It sounds like you are. And I hope Elizabeth finds her happy place. Yes. I wish her luck, please. And wish your brother luck on his decision. Thank and hopefully you. I'll get to meet your dad someday. But tell both your parents that they should be very proud of you and your fa- your family members. They did a great job. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. It was nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.